Hello, everyone. As Corey said, my capstone is entitled The Balance of Water Availability and Economic Development with an Exchanging Climate for the Wine Producing Region of the Valle de Guadalupe in Baja, California. I'm going to start my presentation with some background information and why I chose the Valle as the center of my research. I'll then get into my other topics, including, of course, climate change impacts, water availability and use, and economic growth challenges, which was the topic I didn't initially plan for. Part of my research involved going down to the Valle several times to meet and talk with scientists and winemakers. And once I heard about this aspect of the situation, I knew I had to include it. So coming into this program, I knew I wanted to focus my capstone on the wine industry in some capacity. I just didn't know what specifically. Uh, I've been in the industry for several years now, and the conversation about wine and climate change is often around heat, and for good reason. Vitis vinifera grapes, uh, the common grapevine, grow best in average temperatures of about 55 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on the exact type of grape. And the observed growing season temperature average for wine regions around the world have increased by 2.34 degrees Fahrenheit between the years 1950 and 2000. So that might not sound like a lot, but it's pretty extreme for a very sensitive crop. So to respond to the heat, uh, several adaptations, two predominant ones have been emerging. The first is planting new varietals um, in that ones, to ones that are more heat tolerant. And this has really shaken up the very strict wine laws of what can be grown where in Europe. And the second adaptation is grow somewhere else entirely, either higher in latitude or in altitude, uh, such as what we've seen in England or Sweden. Now what the image shows is um, belts on either side of the equator from 30 to 50 degrees latitude, which is generally where grapes can be grown best. And as you can see, England and Sweden are beyond that. So as necessary as these heat adaptations are, the urgency and the seriousness of the main issue is sometimes lost with these short-term solutions. So when the topic of water availability came up, it felt like the perfect option that was hiding in plain sight to really stress and understand more about these topics. So agricultural water stress from urban competition and extreme weather events has already been exper um, experienced and studied on a global scale, but rarely viewed from a viticultural perspective. So I was curious, what could a future look like under conditions of low rainfall, urban growth competition, and severely declining freshwater sources? What would it mean for individuals who have worked in and lived in an area their entire life, if not for generations, and whose cultural and economic livelihood was tied to this place? This hypothetical situation was actually happening and its effects being experienced firsthand in Mexico's wine country of the Valle de Guadalupe. So the Valle can be found in the northwestern portion of the country uh, in the space where the green box is. And it has a very interesting history. Grapes were originally brought over by Spanish missionaries in the 1600s. And now the Valle is home to 90% of Mexico's wine production. But despite the long history, the Valle has flown under the radar for many years compared to other powerhouse wine regions around the world. It's seen a surge of new wineries and restaurants in the last two decades, and now there are more than 100 wineries in the area. It's also located on the 32 degree uh, latitude line, so just in that threshold of 30 to 50 uh, degrees, but it's perfect for growing uh, grapes. And with this project, I really wanted to learn from the people who live and work in this region and understand more about the Mexican wine industry, what the problems are, what is being done to address them, and to help share the story of the Valle. So a more zoomed in viewpoint, uh, what makes it so great for growing wine is in the Mediterranean climate with hot, dry summers and mild, rainy winters. It also has a maritime influence coming in from the Pacific. And vines are generally planted at elevations over 1,000 feet. However, the Valle only gets about 10 inches of rain a year, so most of the water used in irrigation and wine production is sourced from the area's aquifer. It also has an official wine route, La Ruta del Vino, which has brought attention to the area. 
As the Valle became more traveled, infrastructural development has taken the form of boutique hotels, housing for vacation rentals, and spaces to hold events like weddings and concerts. And these activities are overexploiting and draining the aquifer. These events can bring in hundreds of people for a short period of time, creating negative impacts to locals such as noise pollution, waste, traffic, and land destruction. And it also dramatically increases the need for water. As a result, the Valle's inhabitants find themselves in a complicated situation should these issues go unaddressed and are working to find a balance in tourism and preserving the ecology of the area. Now on a global scale, according to the US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, carbon dioxide quantities in the atmosphere have increased by 25% since the late 1950s and 40% since the Industrial Revolution. Temperature averages differ around the world for a variety of reasons, wind circulation, atmospheric moisture, chemical makeup, and the influential and slow changing oceans. But generally, all the increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere leads to more warming, which then leads to increased evapotranspiration, decreased soil moisture, and increased water vapor in the atmosphere. And all of this has a direct consequence of weather variability and unpredictability. And extreme weather events come about as a result of the heat in the atmosphere. And when combined with the extra water, increases the strength of storms. So overall, the result could lead to more intense and longer lasting heat waves and changes in frequency or duration of precipitation. Now for the Valle, approximately 77% of total rainfall occurs in the winter, with only 2% in the summer. The grape growing season for the Northern Hemisphere is between April to October where grapes need water the most. And studies have been conducted looking at the temperature and rainfall in the Valle. And it was found that between 1992 and 2018, consecutive dry years were much more common with the 2017-2018 hydrological year holding the record for the driest year of the Valle with an annual precipitation of just barely over two inches of rain. The Valle de Guadalupe has undergone significant recent periods of low rainfall, putting a further strain on the aquifer supply. So when it comes to water availability, current water levels of the aquifer are complicated to determine due to the inconsistent measurements, which is a data constraint com when comparing rates of extraction versus rates of replenishment. But one aspect that scientists and the Federal Regulatory Agency of Mexico, CONAGUA, can agree on is that the aquifer is in a state of deficit, which occurs when the amount of water extracted outweighs the amount of recharge within a supply. The Valle's aquifer can hold a total volume of 218 million cubic meters. And for reference, um, uh, one cubic meter is the equivalent of eight large moving boxes put together to make a cube with, uh, in the image, our smiley guy being model for scale. <laughs> now, annual recharge is dependent on rainfall, with temperature and evapotranspiration from plants and surface waters also playing a part in how much water makes it into the groundwater reserves. In 2018, a little over 37 million cubic meters was authorized to be extracted, with about 18 million cubic meters being recharged based on the average values of precipitation, which put the yearly deficit at about a little over 18 million cubic meters. And deficits throughout the past three years have been gradually increasing. Between 1990 and 2009, it's estimated that an average of 28.2 million cubic meters was extracted each year. For the wine industry, the main uses of water uh, involve irrigation, cellar production, and location-specific in uh, use, like heat or frost mitigation. There are lots of figures that have been published about water quantity needed, but each one is ultimately an estimate. The exact amount used depends on each individual circumstance or decisions by winemakers. And if restaurants or hotels are included in a winery's business model, the quantity of water needed uh, continues to increase depending on the size of the infrastructure, volume of guests, and if swimming pools or water features are incorporated. So all that to say, irrigation takes up a lot, but so does cleaning equipment like barrels and fermentation tanks. And even with efficient technologies and techniques in production, a heavy quantity of water is required, which just further emphasizes the value of this limited resource in areas that are already stressed for water, like the Valle. When I visited I, to talk with winemakers, 
I've discovered that several have worked and lived in the Valle since the 1980s, when there were wineries that were only in quantities in the single digits, and now there are more than 100. La Ruta del Vino, the Valle's official wine route, has certainly helped put the Valle on the map, and with that, there came an influx of wineries uh, with restaurants, with renowned chefs from LA and Mexico City, and hotels to give a full experience for the visitors. This attention attracted not just visitors, but also people looking for business and development opportunities. And so it's not surprising, considering the wine industry and affiliated tourism accounts for 3.6 billion pesos of revenue for this region. So there are limited quantitative statistics of how much total infrastructure in the Valle has developed in the last 10 years, but the next two images show that urban areas have been accumulating. So the first image shows urban areas in 2010. No? The other, oh yes, you're right, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Nick, for the laser pointer. Uh, so urban areas in 2010 includes uh, this orange perimeter here. And the next one is the urban areas in 2020, which, as you can see, development projects have really been expanding just in the 10 years. So developers and investors from all over Mexico have observed this rise in popularity and have sought to take advantage for themselves with different goals and coming from different industries. Interviewees stated that they often look for ways to make money quickly. Building hotels and housing takes much less time than setting up wineries or restaurants. Locals feel torn about the situation because while increased tourism represents revenue for local businesses and an opportunity to share world-class wines through customer advocacy, they also stress that the rate of development needs to slow down and be done strategically. Residents have shown incredible tenacity in speaking out against enormous development projects and have enacted local regulations for large events to conclude at certain times so as not to disrupt neighbors with noise. And the image is from a demonstration against the construction of a amphitheater from 2021. And the sign says, yes to agriculture, no to massive events. So as was shown, Valle grape growers and residents haven't been waiting for anyone to come in and fix the problem. Many have already implemented solutions to conserve water and to benefit the land around them. Drip irrigation is one example, which is a method that slowly waters plants in small quantities right at the soil, which saves water, emphasizes soil, excuse me, optimizes soil moisture levels, and reduces chance of disease that could occur within too much moisture on the leaves. And some vineyards, like one that I visited, Tres Mujeres, incorporate small islands of native plants interspersed among the grapevines to protect the soil from too much sun and provide natural shade for the vines. Additional implemented and proposed solutions to drought and water shortages have included bringing water in by truck, which has been done in past drought years. A water pipe system has been discussed, but ha is ultimately too expensive. And this was a solution that was widely talked about in 2018, but since then it's basically been radio silent and haven't heard much about if the project even went through or where it's at. And a third option includes reclaimed water, which is water from residential or industrial use that has been treated in a processing plant and has also been discussed as an option for watering crops and replenishing the aquifer. But additional research and policy alignment would be needed before it can be considered a viable option. So work continues to develop and implement solutions for sustainable growth and to conserve and optimize water usage in the Valle. And scientists from two universities in Ensenada have begun work on a government authorized multi-year project uh, in the Valle to conduct long-term monitoring of water quality and retention, improve data capture and share findings am amongst a wide audience, and involve residents and scientists alike in water management so they can work collectively to address the issues of water shortages in the declining aquifer. And to conclude my presentation as a call to action for wine lovers and tourists, I'm going to echo, echo Corey and say, for those who want to support the region, uh, definitely should go visit and check out the Valle. Um, also, the power of the dollar should never be underestimated. So, and by choosing Valle wines, consumers are supporting hours of labor and passion from individuals who want the world to know about the Valle. Uh, enjoy the peace of the rural region. And if visiting or drinking wines from the Valle, share your story. The world deserves to know about this area of the world, even if it's not in everybody's radar just yet. 
I would like to thank uh, several people, Edgar, Yvette, True, Ing Fernandez, and Santiago, who were kind enough to invite me to talk with them, share their stories, share their wines. I am so grateful for their perspective and for getting an insight on what is going on in the Valle. And I would also like to thank my committee, Tere and Tomas from CSESE, the Ensenada Center for Scientific Research and Higher Education, as well as, as, well as Larry from UCSD. Uh, thank you so much for your expertise and your guidance. I truly appreciate all of you. Uh, to Mom, Sammy, and Kevin, I love you. To our CSP program leaders, Corey, Hannah, and Mark, thank you for the support and everything that you do for making this program what it is. And to my CSP 2023 cohort, I am constantly inspired by the brilliance and the capabilities and the passion that you all have. And it has been an absolute honor to learn and work side by side with you all. And with that, thank you so much. And I will take any questions. <laughs> I don't know if this is entirely related to what your research focused on, but in the past year since we've had increasing temperatures, has there been a noticeable change in the quality of wines that this region's produced? Ooh, that's a great question. Because of temperature, mm -hmm. I didn't look into that. There were so many avenues that I could have explored at this project more, and that's certainly one that I would love to learn more about. I unfortunately just didn't have time, but that's a great question. <laughs> First, very good, good work. Congratulations. Um, I'm just curious to know how much of this um, capture rainfall um, water are spread, and if you of these technologies, if mm -hmm. they are, how much of that is spread on, into the properties, and if you know about any initiative that is providing education or kind of like. Um, Formations should people reply to these technologies? Yes, th those are great questions. Uh, so for the first one, as far as the technologies, from what I've seen and what I've heard, a lot of it is implemented on a smaller scale. So each winery, each vineyard is doing their part to come up with solutions and to save water. Um, but as far as the bigger picture of grander uh, options to provide for the area and to spread education, that's one of the, those are two things that the, the, the team from the two universities from Ensenada really want to try and achieve as far as not only using this as a, an opportunity to gather more information, increase monitoring, but then spread education in the area and also come up with some big picture solutions that could help this whole region. So definitely in progress. You mentioned um, the greater region of Europe and the wine laws, mm -hmm. and have you seen that they are starting to shift to account for the variations in grape that have to be grown? Absolutely, so the biggest uh, example of that is in Bordeaux, where historically there have been only about five or six red varietals, for example, that are authorized to be grown. And I think it was either this past year or the year before where they authorized an introduction of four new varietals. Where um, that are more heat tolerant, just to respond to this these warming trends that have been impacting this industry. So, that is the first example that comes to mind. But I'm sure there'll be others, especially in Europe. the The beauty of the Valle is the fact that they're not necessarily bound to any restrictions, which is really great for the creative process as far as they can grow what they think would work best and and have full creative liberties to make what they want to make. Thank you all.